So I'm back in Devon after a week in Switzerland and I'm off to do some woodland photography and I don't really do a lot of woodland photography so it's going to be interesting. I'm also going to what seems like quite a popular or famous place and I've never been there before. So we've got about an hour's drive to Dartmoor and we'll see what we can find. After a beautiful drive over parts of Dartmoor, I arrived at the car park at the start of the trail. I needed an energy boost and luckily the Two Bridges Hotel was serving delicious Devonshire cream teas. Once I'd fueled up on cream and jam, I headed out. Finally on the track. So just back there is the Two Bridges Hotel, which would be really nice to stay at actually. And then following this track should lead us to Wisman's Wood, which is, at least from what I've read, kind of gnarly, intertwined trees. And there's a little bit of colour changing at the minute for the, the autumn colours. Little sheep around and, of course, as is absolutely typical <laughs> for this channel, when I set out this morning, it was about an hour drive. It was blue sky, sunny, got here, pretty good still. Came out after my uh, little cheeky cream tea and look at that. Pretty sure that's gonna be some nasty rain coming soon. Need to get a move on. So I haven't been back to Dartmoor for probably 10, 15 years. I've actually forgotten how amazingly beautiful it is. Oh, there's some rain. I'm trying to outrun that cloud. I love just driving here and there's just tours, which are little outcroppings of rock, just popping out all over the place. Yeah, so beautiful. And actually on the way here, passed by an amazing kind of hillside of bracken, which is just going to that copper autumn color. Oh dear, here comes that cloud burst. So just dodged one storm, rain jacket is on. It's like another storm cloud is coming. And actually, as well as rain on this channel, I think I might be getting a bit lost, but not 100% sure. Should probably clean that lens as well. According to the map that I got, you come down there and there, follow this along. And there's a valley just down there, with a little stream in it. That should lead you to Wisman's Wood. And it's on this side of the stream, so at least I'm on the right side of the stream. So if I'm not mistaken, that is Wisman's Wood. And it doesn't look like it's had much of an autumn change in colour yet. Just have to wait until we get there. So I can see quite a few uh, fluorescent jackets, you know, from walkers. And uh, this is the thing I always get nervous about coming to really popular photography spots is that a, is there going to be loads of people there making it hard to get a shot? And B, are there going to be loads of people there making me nervous to shoot in public and record to camera? And someone's just coming. So I finally made it to the outskirts of Wisman's Wood. And we can already see a little bit of a, a taste. We've got these lichen, lichen, lichen covered boulders and this really cool moss covered trees. So I had to stop recording a minute ago because there was a walker on the trail right behind me. <laughs> I'm so rubbish at uh, talking to the camera in public. Anyway, I'm gonna have a, a little look around and then hopefully try and find our first composition. So for this first shot, I've kind of ignored the traditional wisdom of woodland photography where you try and exclude the sky. I've tried to just kind of capture the messiness and the spider legness of the tree with all of the branches kind of going out all over the place. So I'm just waiting for a bit of light to hit the trees. We've got a lot of cloud around, so when the light comes, we get like a nice dappled effect. So I'm just gonna wait for that light to come and we'll get the first photo in the bag. So it doesn't look like there's any light coming anytime soon as a massive bank of cloud. Because I don't actually love this composition very much, I'm just gonna take the photo without the light and then move in and try and find a composition that I really love that'll be worth waiting for the light. I've got about an hour at this location before I have to go, so it's better to come away with one photo you really love than lots of 
photos that are kind of half done or no photos at all. So let's go get this photo. Two second timer. Okay, for this second composition, again, I'm kind of flouting all the rules and just 16 millimeters angled up to try and get some of that kind of messiness again in the frame, but we're getting a lot of bright sky in it, which is not, not ideal. I'll show you that now and you can let me know what you think in the comments. The search continues. I might be switching things up to the 24 to 70 mil lens, I think, just so I can isolate more of the trees. And I've also got the 70 to 200, should I need it. I'm really struggling, actually. Not only are there lots of people around, which is making it hard to film these pieces to the camera, but I remembered why I don't often do woodland photography, and that's because, honestly, I'm not very good at it. And I haven't done enough of it to really get my eye in. So I'll switch to the 24 to 70 Sigma, and I'm at the 70 millimeter lens. So I'm just trying to isolate, isolate, isolate more of the subject matter rather than trying to use my kind of open landscape photographer brain, if that makes sense. And I'm also switched to a square one by one crop to further try and isolate areas of this woodland. I think what I'm gonna do is actually try and just change my perception, try and represent the, the atmosphere or the feeling of this place rather than a sweeping view that accurately represents it, if that makes sense. Anyway, so here we've got a square crop. Just check exposure. Just going to underexpose a little bit. I'm relying on autofocus here because I'm lazy. All right, two second timer. So I do like the fact that these branches here, or this tree was kind of coming up out, but I'm gonna to continue to try and isolate parts of this woodland, I may even put on the 70 to 200. Well, after a bit more searching, I found another tree a little bit further along. I kind of quite like how we've got a bit of foreground in the boulders and then the kind of shapes for the tree. Anyway, I'll put that on screen now. Let me know what you think. As more and more people came walking through the woods, I got less and less comfortable filming. I did get a few more shots though, like this intimate handheld snapshot of some mushrooms and a few seconds of dappled light in this shot. And what is probably my favorite photo from this shoot that highlights a single stone amongst the beautiful chaos. If you love landscape photography, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.